Okay, the second critical choice that I made, and we'll roll right into here, was to commit, commit to a two-way agreement. For me at the time, it was committing to a two-way agreement with my sister. Since then, well, when I committed to this two-way agreement with my sister, what I experienced, I experienced this transformation from I have to do these things to I want mm. to. I, I actually felt the transformation from duty and obligation to joy and desire because of the commitment in the agreement. So I'm very curious. Nowadays, I think we have and do enter into two-way agreements often. Two people that come together or two entities with the uh, mutual desire for a mutually beneficial outcome. The outcome might be different for me than the outcome is for you, but we're in it, you know, for benefiting both people. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we don't commit. So when you think about two-way agreements, is there a two-way agreement that you've entered into in your life that when you reflect, you say, you know, this is what I gave and this is what I got. And it's really impacted and played a role in my journey. Well, I think actually when when you when you share your story of that two way agreement, I think, you know, like you said, it's it's not always this thing you're so happy about at first, but it it is, it, and you start out with something like you said that you kind of need to do, and then it turns into what I want to do, and and I think um, my decision to leave my my big nonprofit job and my fancy title and all of that was a very hard decision for me to make. And I, I decided I spent a small time in, in between what I'm doing now, working at a private school as the leadership coach and, and, um, I could like entrepreneurship director. And, and it took everything I had to leave. It was more, my ego didn't want to leave the job that I was doing because but it was devastating to my family. I was gone every month, you know, my emotion, the things I was dealing with and seeing in the field was, was just the, on my mental health was not good, but to the outside, I looked so cool and I'm in a different country every month and I'm saving babies and like, oh, it's so cool. And I'm hanging out with, you know, ministers of health and first ladies of countries and going to diplomatic parties and then so cool. But the everything on the inside was so hard and I was feeling like I needed to reconnect with my family. And so making that choice to leave that job and take this other job was that sort of agreement that you're talking about to myself and to my family. And and it then turned yeah. into something that I really did want, because what was most important to me was the connection not only to myself, but to my family, because I really wasn't facing myself. And, and, you know, it was a pretty easy way to, I think we do things sometimes um, covertly to, to seem like we're doing all these great things, but really I was just avoiding my life. I was avoiding my real life by being overseas mm -hmm. a lot. And, and I was avoiding it by, but you couldn't be mad at me because I wasn't, I wasn't like I was gambling or drinking. I was saving babies. So how can, but it was no different of really the behavior of avoidance when I made a conscious choice of saying, I need to face myself, my family, my role as a parent and, and do this other job for a while. And then I can make a conscious choice of what's next. Uh, and you said it at the beginning, I'll restate it. It is, for me, such a great example of your commitment to your family. Guess what? We didn't really want to do those. <laughs> it, no. it, it was almost have to. Yes. Right? And, and that sounds, but the, it's hard. But I understand it. that. Me, it was. It was. <laughs> but I under, totally get it. I totally get it. But the transformation then went to, oh my God. And then you just take it off from there because you've Completely. created because an amazing it, career, second career. Yeah. 
And it's true. And I would say that the truth is, is the have to side of the kids thing. For me, it was that it doesn't mean I didn't love my children beyond. And but totally. I, I really didn't love the work portion of being a mom of young kids at home. I wasn't in my mind very good at it. It wasn't very fulfilling to me. And I think it's very fair and for women to feel that that's okay. And I sort of avoided it in a different way by choosing a career that did take me away from it. But again, on the ego side, you couldn't be mad at me for it or or think I would, you know, because I was doing something so great out in the world. But yeah. in a very real way, there was a portion of it that was an avoidance of that portion of my life. And I really mm -hmm. wanted to re connect to it. And my children and I now, like I said, they're older kids now, you know, 19 or, or 18 and 20. And, and we talk about it a lot. And, and we really did a lot more quality over quantity. But when I reflect back on it being a choice, it, it was, it, whether totally conscious or not, it was a choice um, that I had to shift. Yeah. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Choose and Become interview series. To check out more episodes, go to www.trishkendall.com backslash podcast, or go to any of your favorite podcast channels, including YouTube under Trish Kendall Speaks, and you'll find this interview and more. Choose and Become.